The Russell Berry Nanotechnology Institute here at Technion is an umbrella organization for all nano activity in campus and the joint endeavor of three bodies. One of them is the Russell Berry Foundation. It's a very interesting philanthropic foundation, uh, very involved in the decisions, in the, all the processes uh, done here. So it's really a very unique partnership. The other partner is the government of Israel through a body called TELEM, which includes the Chief Scientist Ministry of Industry, Trade and Labor, the Finance uh, Ministry, Ministry of uh, uh, Defense. And the third partner is uh, Technion. Nanotechnology is uh, highly multidisciplinary. It combines biology with chemistry, physics, you name it. And uh, one of the motivations for setting up this uh, uh, institute, which is a campus-wide uh, uh, effort, was in fact to try and break those uh, walls, traditional walls between uh, disciplines, besides the scientific achievements. This is also our success, the coming down of those walls and the establishment of a very vibrant, multidisciplinary community here in campus. It involves about 115 researchers, faculty members, and about 300 graduate students. So altogether about 400 researchers in campus, which makes it by far the largest non-technology institute in Israel, but also large on any other scale, on a European scale or uh, an American uh, uh, scale. Our activities touch upon every aspect of life in campus, starting with recruitment of promising faculty members. We recruit them from all over the world, many of them from the best universities in the United uh, States. We set up new labs for them and we help them start their academic career. In addition to that, we are heavily involved with uh, uh, educational programs in nanoscience and nanotechnology. The flagship is the Norman Zeiden Multidisciplinary Graduate Program in Nanoscience and Nanotechnology. This is a unique program. We take students who did their undergraduate in biology, physics, chemistry, engineering. They need to have very high average grade and we also interview them, so they are really handpicked. And then their curriculum is individual in the sense that Somebody coming from biology will have to take lots of courses from physics and chemistry. Somebody coming, say, from chemistry will have to take lots of courses from physics and biology, and so on. And we are trying to educate Renaissance people, people that will feel equally comfortable in all those uh, disciplines. Other uh, aspects of our activity include encouragement of multidisciplinary research projects, both here in campus, but also collaborations with other universities elsewhere in Europe, in, the, uh, in North America, in uh, Asia, and so on. And we are also responsible for setting up collaborations with industry. Another aspect of our activity is just setting up infrastructure that serves not only Technion researchers, but it actually serves all Israeli researchers doing nanotechnology from other universities, from industry. So we are effectively turning into a kind of a national facility or a national uh, center of uh, excellence. One nanometer is one billionth of a meter. It's a really a very uh, uh, small uh, uh, dimension. You can fit, just to give you a feeling, you can fit 100,000 nanometers in just in one hair fiber sideways. Whenever people talk about uh, non-technology, one of the things that comes to mind is being able to make very small, useful objects. This usually facilitates squeezing more of them into the same volume, producing them in a less expensive uh, way. But this is only one aspect of nanotechnology. There is uh, a long list of properties, in fact, that come to play when the object is small enough and you can control those properties very well. It's not that the laws of physics change when you go to, to these dimensions, but different facets of those, of those laws are, are expressed. And those objects uh, are, can be instilled with properties that one cannot really achieve with large microsco microscopic objects. Let me give you an example. We are all used to uh, gold color, right? It's clear to us what, what does it mean, gold color. But if you will take a piece of gold and cut it into smaller and smaller pieces on the order a few tenths of nanometers, you'll find out that the color of those pieces changes. First it would change to red and then to green and then to blue, which tells you that the optical properties of, of this 
tiny grain of gold have changed dramatically. So by engineering the size and shape, we can tune the properties. And in, indeed, these kind of gold particles are today used in medical diagnostics, for instance, due to the fact that we can control the, the color of light they emit. And there are many, many other uh, examples. For instance, it turns out that if you make an object small enough, it, it's going to be much, much stronger than a macroscopic, than a large, uh, a large uh, object. So by making molecularly designed object, we can get materials that are, say, 50 times stronger than the strongest steel. So that's probably what's today is the main uh, field of uh, research and also uh, development in nanotechnology. But looking into the future, I, I believe that nanotechnology is going to, to change in engineering in a dramatic way. So it's not just technology made smaller, as many people perceive. It's actually going in the direction, it goes through the harnessing of the new properties displayed, new features displayed by small objects, but it will eventually go, turn into a completely new type of engineering, completely different philosophy or concepts, how to fabricate useful uh, uh, objects. Overall, there are 300 research projects at Technion on various aspects of uh, nanoscience and uh, nanotechnology. One very interesting project is carried out by Hossam Hayek. He is developing a very small, inexpensive nanosensors that can sense small molecules emitted by, by a person when that person just exhales air. It turns out that people who are sick in different uh, diseases including, by the way, it is not disease, but including people who suffer from cancer, they emit a very uh, uh, kind of specific uh, uh, signature of those molecules. So by an analyzing the, the small molecule content in the patient's breath, it should be possible to tell what kind of disease that person has, what's the stage, and so on and so forth. Hossam focuses on detecting and characterizing cancer. And this is a very promising technology because it's going to be inexpensive enough and simple enough to be operated in the doctor's uh, office. We consider this interface between life sciences and man-made engineering, if you like, a very promising uh, direction. In our next phase, we, we are planning on investing uh, a very, signif very significant uh, funds into that uh, field in collaboration with the uh, life science and engineering project headed here by uh, Professor Chekhanov, our one of our two Nobel laureates. Let me give you a completely different uh, example which that relates in fact to energy. So uh, you, you may take uh, the work uh, done by Dr. Giti Fry in our materials engineering department. And one of the topics she has been pursuing is a completely new type of white, white light emitters. You may know that lighting consumes approximately 10% of the global energy consumption. But most of our light sources are inefficient. So you get very little light for, for, for that energy. And there is a large effort done worldwide trying to uh, invent completely new light sources that will replace the existing light sources and will produce light at much higher efficiencies. And Giti's device is a very, very sophisticated device that emits white light. In fact, this would be a completely different aspect of nanotechnology. Of course, I could count here many, many more examples or uh, in diagnostics, in medical diagnostics, medic medical therapeutics, for instance, uh, we have extensive research in drug delivery, how to uh, encapsulate drugs in uh, nano-size capsules and, so to speak, write the address on those capsules, just launch them, let them drift, uh, hook up to their target and release the drug in a controlled way over extended periods of, of time. My own research focuses at the interface between nanoelectronics and molecular biology. What we are trying to do in collaboration with the Professor Joram Reiter here at our biology department, Professor Reiter is an immunologist, we are trying to develop strategies, generic strategies, how for instance 
to turn on and off biological processes uh, by an electronic signal presented to the system, but at the level of a single molecule, not, not on the a level of, a, of uh, on the cellular level and so on, as is done today already with, uh, let's say, neurons or, or cardiac cells, but at a much, much smaller, uh, at a much, much smaller scale. And recently, we made a very significant uh, progress in that uh, direction. We created what I believe to be the first real functional interface be between these two foreign uh, uh, worlds. The Nano Bible came out as a result of our ongoing efforts uh, to outreach to uh, high school uh, students. We are all the time uh, trying to get them interested in science, interested in, in, in technology, and we routinely present science to them. It turns out, by the way, that non-technology kinds of inspires them. It attracts their imagination. It, while uh, presenting nanotechnology to them, it became clear very, very, very quickly that it's, it is very hard for them to grasp how small one nanometer is. You can fit 100,000 nanometers in just in one hair fiber sideways. The Nano Bible was actually an attempt to, to give them a feeling for, for the smallness of things. What we did was basically to write down the, the whole Bible on, on a grain which is approximately the size of a sugar grain. We hope that it will give them a feeling for the degree of miniaturization. Obviously, because it was the Bible, then <laughs> it generated a lot of attention and interest, starting from all kinds of religious uh, organizations to the Israeli Museum, who asked us uh, for a copy to display next to the Dead Sea Scrolls as the oldest version of the Bible and the newest ver version of the Bible. But it really started as, just as an educational uh, uh, program. It's a very exciting time for nanotechnology and uh, it's a very exciting time here at the Technion. The Technion provides one of the best atmospheres for doing research in nanotechnology. The number of and quality of researchers, the infrastructure, the vibrant community has very few parallels. Technion has set the technological agenda, the scientific agenda of the State of Israel in many fields. And much effort and enthusiasm and talent is now going into nanotechnology. From our four years activity in nanoscience and nanotechnology, there are already some new companies established focused on applications of nanotechnology to various fields. A very significant number of patents are being written all the time by Technion researchers. So the Institute has boosted the applications of uh, industrial applications of uh, nanotechnology uh, as well. Another uh, aspect of this interaction with industry is dozens of companies in fact approach us both with specific uh, questions, specific projects and also uh, with more general uh, with more general uh, aspects and to my surprise not only small companies but also large companies such as Intel uh, applied materials and so on take advantage of the facilities we have here and the expertise we have in running those facilities so in my opinion the effect of the Russell Berry Nanotechnology Institute on Israeli industry in nanoscience and nanotechnology is already growing very fast, but will continue to grow fast in the coming uh, years.